Hey guys, Garrett from River Valley Rochester here. Just going to walk through Yamaha's Connect screen. And this is the biggest of the three screens, and it has the full functionality. Whereas the smaller screens have slightly abbreviated options, this one shows you everything. So we're going to run through an experience very similar to what you're going to have the first time you start your boat up. Now you can hear the blower has come on. So we've got our auto blower coming on, and you're going to see here in a moment it's counting down from five minutes which is the recommended time that you would run the blower prior to boating. So we are going to quit this. We know we're low on fuel and we're going to make it be quiet right here. Now, if we look around our, our different options here, our framework of the connect screen is going to remain stable no matter what thing we're in, in terms of uh, different, uh, different indexes. So now what we're going to see here right away, float mode. And in order for you guys to see this a little bit better, we're gonna skip ahead just a tiny bit. We're gonna hit settings. We're gonna go adjust our brightness. And then you're gonna see in a hurry, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna get a lot better look at things now that we've adjusted our brightness down to uh, the lowest setting possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and continue walking through. We'll come back to the settings and talk about one more thing, but let's go back home. And we're gonna go ahead and get back to what I was saying about the various options being stable around the border. And then you've also got your, your obvious indexes up at the top. So um, we're going to shut the blower up because we're not going boating today, unfortunately. But let's walk through uh, some of the stuff that we're looking at right now. Obviously, we've got our clock, got our fuel gauge, got our depth gauge, and we've got the float mode. And we get a lot of questions about float mode. Uh, first couple of times people boat, it throws people for a little bit of a loop. It's really just a slightly different set of information that's going to be more pertinent to when the boat is not running. Whereas when we fire the boat up, some of this stuff is going to be replaced by a tachometer and some other things. So in this instance, float mode is just going to show us our stereo control, going to show water temp. And, uh, and again, we've got some stuff that stays stable, such as our battery voltage, compass heading, and our warning lights at the bottom. Now these buttons are also going to be accessible in other areas, and we'll talk about that again. But uh, these are just going to be something that quick access to some of the more common functions without having to hop through the different indexes. You're also going to see the, the throttle binnacle symbol down here, which is going to be the way that you would switch the boat into single lever operation, should you choose to run it that way. <clears throat> GPS heading, that's pretty straightforward stuff here. I don't use it a lot. We pretty much don't leave the home lake, so not a whole lot going on for me in terms of how I use this. But you can see here, being that the boat is still brand new and has not left home, so to speak, it thinks it's literally home in Tennessee, uh, see, uh, Venor, Tennessee, where the Yamaha Boat Factory is. But it is, in fact, sitting in our new showroom floor in our beautiful Marine Super Center in Rochester, Minnesota. So we're going to go ahead and skip forward into trip information. And this is just going to be some obvious stuff, recording your, your fuel economy, your total mileage, miles or gallons, gallons per hour, that sort of stuff. Now we're going to flip forward to drive control. <clears throat> this is where it gets fun for the water sport enthusiasts. In this instance, we're going to have the adjustment control of target speed and acceleration profile. On the next package boat, we would additionally have our balance controls just below this, giving us independent push button control, touchscreen push button control over our three ballast bags. In this case, we've got just the ability to adjust target speed and also adjust how fast the boat gets there. So we're going to go ahead and set this up as if it were an next package boat and we were going to go wakeboarding. So we're going to click target speed. I typically run on a Yamaha boat a little fast at about 21 and a half. And then we're going to save it. For acceleration profile, we have a very wide range of riders that all like to use the boat full of ballast. So we have no real need to adjust the ballast settings, but we do have uh, the need to adjust how we're pulling people out of the water. So as an example, some of the girls don't like to have such an aggressive pullout, whereas some of the bigger guys need one. So I always adjust it to manual. That way, depending upon who's riding, as the captain, you just use your head a little bit, roll on the throttle if it's, uh, if it's someone smaller and lighter, or go ahead and, and let them have it if it's uh, one of the boys. So we're going to go ahead and save this. And in order to click this in and have it as a, a save preset, I'm going to hold down one of these buttons, and it gives me the option to then name my preset. So we're going to go ahead and make it look just like... River Valley 242X. And now, had we had the opportunity to fill ballast, 
it'd be looking just like a day on the water for me personally. So now let's skip forward to our stereo controls. This is one area that has been throwing people for a little bit of a loop as they get used to this new screen. The Bluetooth functionality is the most common way that people are playing music these days. We do have the ability to have USB auxiliary inputs, but for the most part, people are getting away from the cords and wanting to run Bluetooth. So easy enough, let's go ahead and sync up. Well, here's where we run into some headaches. People have a hard time syncing up to the system for the first time. And, and a part of the reason why is because the, the boat does not show up in discoverable mode. So we're gonna go ahead and make it that way. Now that we've clicked discoverable, our phones will find it instantaneously. And from that point forward, it'll find itself every time. Go ahead and quiet that down. And we're gonna go ahead and check out our settings. You see that you do have some independent control of your, your bass, your, your mid-range and your, and your treble. And then if you go back to the equalizer, there are actually some presets as well. I've had the best luck simply utilizing the bass, middle, and treble adjustments, but you can do what you, what you want there. And then for the fader, Again, I, I've had the best luck just leaving it right as it sits centralized here, but you can adjust it based on what you want to do for whether or not you're hanging out in the boat, outside of the boat. So let's get back here and, um, and say we want to switch source again, just hit the source button, bounce around to whatever we're, we're using. We hit the uh, boat symbol here, we're going to get into system controls. This is going to give us uh, basically a, a switch set that runs almost everything on the boat. So again, we've got redundant controls over our bilge and our blower over here. We're probably not going to use those. We're going to primarily bounce around with these. And then when it comes to our lighting systems, we will use this particular index every time. So we've got our dock lights. We now see a visual indicator. We've got our tower lights. Again, visual in indicator, interior lights, navigation, anchoring. And let's get back to... Oh, thanks for night boating suddenly. So let's get back to, oh, there we go. And we're going to go ahead and shut these off. But I do want to display one more thing. With the power lights, if you watch, as I use this little adjuster here, you can see it gets brighter or, or dimmer based on what we're doing. That's kind of neat. And also, if you just tap the button, you can use it that way as well. So that is one, uh, one further control over the, over the system that a lot of people miss at first. If we get into settings, go back to kind of where we started here. I'm going to show one more thing that I like to show people. The depth finder has an adjustment of between 0 and 20 feet. So based on where you're boating and what you're doing, you can have that set up. We, we strongly caution against using that as a primary aid in navigation, as it is a stern-based transducer. And if you think you're going to be in trouble and you're reading it from the stern, you're, you're probably already in trouble. So be careful about using it as uh, a, a strict navigation aid and try to use it just as simple guidelines some, if you're boating somewhere where you don't know what's underneath you or you want to have a little bit of an indicator of you know what's going on in terms of shallow water you'll definitely want to crank this up to probably you know, six or seven feet if you don't know where you're at I personally run mine at zero because I know the lake well and know it to be nothing but a muddy bottom so I can cheat a little bit in that regard but yeah so if we go go back here get back into home that pretty much walks us through our connect system so uh, hope you've uh, hope you've learned something here and if not feel free to reach out to us we're easy to find here in River Valley Rochester at the Marine Super Center thanks and have a good day